All right, so now that we've done some basic styling, let's make sure that the browser, what we've got going on in the browser, let's see, where is that one? Uh, style review index.html, that's what I've opened. And let's look at it in the browser. So here's what we have. And let's make sure that matches the PNG that I prepared for you that has the, it's in the assets folder, that has the text styling result. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I can zoom, ooh, zoom in a little bit on this. Um, so this should be what ours looks like. And let's just do a double check. It looks very close. Yeah. Everything's small caps here, red here, um, underlined, and all the links are red. Yep, everything looks fine. So I know that my index.html looks like the first text styling result. Here's the completed site, by the way. Um, We'll have to zoom in on that to really see it, but this is what we're after in the end. Um, all right, back to the index. And first, let's uh, check out what images are available. So we've got this big black comb image. We've got something named background h3.gif. So there's a hint right there about where you're going to be putting that, probably on the h3s. It's a line with a little diamond at the left. We've got this leaf. We've got something called hover.gif. It's very tiny. Let me just zoom it in. Hover.gif. So you'll, you know that we're going to play with a hover tag. Um, it says li hover. So it's probably going to be on a list item. And then the background li.gif. So this is probably what it will look like without the hover. So the purpose of this video, let's go back to the index, is to familiarize you with the background image properties. And they all start with background. And today, we're going to put this one on the body tag. So let's get up here on the body tag. Um, I'm just going to put a comment and talk to you about all the different kinds of background properties. It's going to be, you'll be typing background and then a hyphen. And the properties available are uh, color, image, repeat, attachment, position, and size. That This one comment just explains all the different available properties for the background tag. And let's begin by getting the image in. So I'll start typing background, and you can see a lot of the options that I just talked about are right here. So let's choose background image with. So we're going to begin with the URL. I just typed the parentheses and URL is my top option. So that's what we're going to use today. And the URL, if I begin looking over here at my path, if I begin typing assets, then I can go straight to images and there's the black comb image. So let's do a save and a refresh and see what that looks like. All right, I've got my background image, but wow. I mean, it's got the text kind of in the way. And look at this. It looks like over here on the right, it started the image again. And if I scroll down, you can see that here are the images again on the left and on the right. So it's doing some things that I'm not happy with and uh, I'm going to have to change those. So the first thing I want to talk about is the feature called background repeat. You can see that is right here underneath image. By default, the background is going to repeat. 
So we have to tell it not to. Let's go right under this tag and start typing background again. And let's choose background repeat. And I'm going to start typing the word no. And you can see here my option is no repeat. So I'm going to save that and come over here and refresh. And look, that's much nicer. It now no longer repeats to the right and left, which would be your X factor, right? Or to the top and bottom, which is the Y factor. How many of you remember from math X and Y? X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Um, it looks good. So now let's talk about attachment. So I'm going to start typing background attachment and choose it. Now, by its very nature, the background, by default, the background attachment is set at scroll. That's the default feature. And the reason for that, let me just show you over here, is that when I scroll up and down, the background scrolls with me. So let's take a look at fixed and see what fixed would look like. Fixed, save and refresh. So now I can scroll up and down, but the background is fixed. It does not scroll with me. A really great example of that is one of the CSS Zen Gardens. You, you can look in there and find plenty of fixed backgrounds. I brought one up in a tab here. It's called CSS Zen Garments. It's the second one after mid-century modern. Um, you can see as I scroll up and down, the background is fixed. Sometimes that's a good idea and sometimes it's not. Um, when is it not a good idea? Well, look at this. Do you see how over here the CZE is, well, it doesn't make the text impossible to read. But in general, when you have a fixed background, you want to make sure it's all very pale, very tints and desaturated colors so that you can read the text. That's the main thing when using a fixed background. Um, so now let's take a look at background position. Even though it's unlikely that we're going to be using this, and I'm going to take off the fixed background because I don't want our background to be fixed. But let's look at background position just so you can see. Uh, look, you've already got some X's and Y's here. I'm going to just get background position so we can talk about this. Um, so by default, the background position is left and top, left space top. When you talk, when you're speaking to someone else, you may be tempted to say top left. I think in the English language, that's what we normally say, top left. But the important thing to remember here about the background position is that by its very nature, the default position is to the left and to the top. The first space after background position is your X and Y, your X factor, and the top, the second one is the Y factor. So this is X, right and left, this is Y, top and bottom. Um, let's go back here and, oops, I don't think I saved. Save and refresh, it should have no change because that's the default. Let's just mess around with it a little bit and say right here, save, refresh. Now it's on the right. So you can say right top or left top. Or if you said, if you did not include a background position tag at all, it would be left top. But I'm showing you here all the options. Um, now let's talk about other things you can use. I can say instead of left and top, I can use pixels, 0px and 0px. If I save and refresh, you'll see it's back at the left top. That's 0 and 0. But what if I wanted it from the top to come down a little bit? What if I wanted to uh, 
get below this CSS Zen garden, the beauty of CSS design? What if I wanted to get below that? I think that looks like about 100 pixels. So I'm going to change the top to 100 pixels. Save and refresh. Well, I wasn't quite on target, but you can see that scoots it right down. So now you understand a little bit more about the properties that can go on the background position, background tag. I'm going to take this off. Whoops. And now save and refresh. Our next task in the next video will be to try and position the text properly because you can see it goes off the page, it comes up too high. You may already have a little idea. Since we positioned an image, you may already have a little idea of how we're going to position the text. All right, onward.